welcome to this American Heart Association Go Red Talk on Peripheral Artery Disease presented by the Heart and Vascular Center of Yale New Haven Health. I'm Dr. Raul Guzman, Surgeon in Chief of Vascular Surgery at Yale New Haven Health. Our vision is to enhance the lives of the people we serve. This Go Red Talk is one way we can share valuable information so you can live a long, vital, and healthy life. Peripheral artery disease is also known as PAD, and it is a narrowing of the arteries that carry blood away from the heart and to other parts of the body. It typically affects arteries of the legs, and people often mistake the symptoms of PAD for something else, such as arthritis or back problems. This Go Red Talk will give you the information you need to gain better cardiovascular health. I'm happy to introduce today's presenters. Please welcome Dr. Britt Tonneson, Associate Professor of Surgery at Yale University School of Medicine. She is a vascular surgeon at the Yale New Haven Hospital Heart and Vascular Center. And also welcome Dr. Isabor Arwidese, Assistant Professor of Surgery at Yale School of Medicine. He is a vascular surgeon at Yale New Haven Hospital and the Heart and Vascular Center. Thank you, Dr. Guzman. It is my pleasure to tell you all about peripheral arterial disease. As one of the conditions we treat as vascular surgeons, to improve heart and vascular health. As we just heard, peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, is a narrowing of the blood vessels, typically of the legs. This causes decreased blood flow to the lower extremities. When people have PAD, they can have pain with walking. This pain typically occurs after walking a distance, such as to the mailbox or to a garage. This pain can occur in the calves or thighs or sometimes in the buttocks. Usually, this pain goes away with rest. In severe cases, PAD can cause continuous pain or wounds that do not heal in the lower legs and feet. These occur simply because of lack of blood flow. Sometimes, our patients ask us what causes PAD. We know that certain things like active smoking, hypertension, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia or bad cholesterol can increase the risk of PAD. There are many other causes of pain in one's legs that may not be related to PAD or vascular disease. For this reason, it is important to see your primary care provider for a complete evaluation and so they can direct you to a vascular specialist if PAD is a concern. At this point, I'll turn you over to my colleague, Dr. Britt Turnison, to tell you some more about PAD. Thank you, Dr. Arhuidese, for that excellent introduction about peripheral arterial disease. I'm Dr. Britt H. Tonneson, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit about what we do when we encounter patients who do have PAD. So there are many different causes for leg pain and some of which are not related to vascular disease as we've discussed. So when I suspect someone might have peripheral arterial disease, there are several initial steps. First, it's important to confirm the correct diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease and identify the correct cause is really key to the proper treatment. So I'll start with a good description of the symptoms from the patient and how those symptoms are affecting their lifestyle. Then a physical exam is performed to include a good examination of the pulses in the legs. Decreased pulses are a concern for peripheral arterial disease. We also look at the skin of the feet, check sensation, temperature, and look for any sores on the feet. The physical exam gives the clinician an overall impression of the possible causes for the leg pain. Next, there are some straightforward and non-invasive tests that can be done to evaluate blood flow in the legs. As shown here in this slide, an ankle, ankle brachial index is a great screening test which simply utilizes blood pressure cuffs that are applied to both the arms and legs in order to measure the degree of obstruction. Another method of non-invasive testing is ultrasound, where we use a duplex ultrasound probe upon the legs. It's painless, it uses no radiation, and can help to diagnose 
obstructions and blockages in the legs. Once PAD is diagnosed, the initial management includes looking at the individual's medications and risk factors. Because smoking leads to peripheral arterial disease, partnering with the patient on methods to smoking cessation is very important. The American Heart Association website has excellent resources for articles and information about smoking cessation. In addition, using antiplatelet medications like aspirin or clopidogrel is appropriate. Statin medications are utilized to fight lipid, also known as plaque buildup in the arteries. And diabetes is a risk factor for peripheral arterial disease. So good control of your diabetes is critical to prevent the progression of disease. And I'd like to discuss the treatment of peripheral arterial disease. Um, first of all, claudication, which uh, Dr. Arhuidase described as pain in the calf or thighs with walking, is often treated with a walking program, smoking cessation, and sometimes medication. In more severe cases, though, a vascular physician can perform an arteriogram. This is an invasive test which is used to create a, a roadmap of your blood flow. This arteriogram is performed with sedation and a small tube called a sheath that is inserted into the groin artery and sometimes the arm. Then we use contrast dye to take images and manipulate small catheters and wires through the blood vessel. Some blocked arteries are suitable for angioplasty, which temporarily involves inserting a balloon into the artery to expand it. As shown in this slide, sometimes a stent can be performed as well to, uh, to more permanently expand the blood vessel. More extensive disease may require a bypass on the leg. A bypass involves taking a vein from the body or sometimes a prosthetic graft and creating a new pathway for the blood to follow. Lastly, patients with peripheral arterial disease need to be aware that atherosclerosis can involve plaque buildup in arteries and other areas of the body, not just the legs. Specifically, we are on the lookout for heart disease and clogged arteries in the neck and brain can lead to stroke. Fortunately, many of the same medications that are used to treat leg artery disease are also used to treat atherosclerotic disease in other areas of the body. As a take home message, I'd recommend if you have risk factors or concerns for peripheral arterial disease, please discuss them with your physician or advanced practice provider. Early diagnosis and preventative care are important for your vascular and heart health. Thank you very much. Thank you, Drs. Tonneson and Arwita Say, for sharing this vital information on PAD. And thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I wish you good vascular health.